Note to self, this video and its channel are intended for general audience. Wilbert the Forest Engine. In summertime, there is no better place to be than the island of Sodor. The engines are happy to work together and be really useful. But this year, there was a problem. The Scottish twin engines, Donald and Douglas, were rushed off their wheels. Sir Topham Hatt came to see them at the Sodor Steamworks. I know you two don't mind hard work, but you can't be everywhere at once. You need some help on the branch lines. Donald and Douglas were grateful. Hmm. I have a plan. Sir Topham Hatt went to see a friend who lived in Gloucestershire and explained the problem. The friend took him to meet Wilbert. A smart blue saddle tank engine with six wheels. Hi, I'm Wilbert. How are you today, sir? Your owner says you can come and help me for a while. Would you like that? Wilbert was delighted. Yes, please, sir. Wilbert's line in the Forest of Dean was short, and he was delighted to exercise his wheels. If you're as good as I think you will be, I know where I can get another engine like you, and then you'll be able to go back home. Percy was excited when he heard the news. Another saddle tank, sir. Is he like me, sir? <laughs> no. He's bigger and stronger than you, Percy. Besides, you can match your cars. I want Wilbert to help Duck, so I'm afraid you may not even meet him. Percy was disappointed. He wanted to meet Wilbert. During the week before Wilbert came, the weather was cold and wet. The engines thought it would never stop raining. None of them wanted to go out, but passengers and freight cars were waiting. Thomas, Percy, and Toby didn't want to go out in the rain either, but they knew their work on the branch line was important. Just the sort of thing when you need porridge for breakfast. What's porridge? It's a... well, it's difficult to describe. You boil oatmeal and water, which makes a sort of sticky soup. Then you add milk and sugar. Mmm, delicious! At the station by the river, sacks were being stacked on the platform. The men who had filled them had worked fast and they hadn't tied the sacks properly. As the porter lifted the last sack, the signal arm dropped with a clang. Oh, better hurry. Percy will be here soon. The porter swung the heavy sack onto the pile, knocking the top one over. Several sacks toppled onto the railway line and split open. The oatmeal inside the sacks burst out, covering everything. The pouring rain quickly turned into a sort of sticky soup. At that moment, Percy appeared. Percy wasn't going fast, but he couldn't prevent himself from plowing into the porridge, which now covered the rails. Ugh! 
Porridge dripped from Percy's wheels, rods, and frames. He felt awful, wet, sticky, and cold. His driver and fireman got down to inspect the mess. Oh, dear! <laughs> well, Percy, you found out about Porridge the hard way. The thing is, you're supposed to eat it, not paddle in it. <laughs> Percy didn't think it was funny. Sir Topham Hatt wasn't amused either. He telephoned the signalman at the junction to stop Wilbert on his way to Duck's branch line. But Wilbert came along Thomas's line instead. He soon reached the shed at the top station. Percy cheered up at once when he saw Wilbert. I'm Wilbert. Nice to meet you, mate. I wanted to meet you, but I didn't think it would be this way. My driver says porridge is alright for breakfast, but it makes a mess of an engine who isn't expecting it. <laughs> Wilbert couldn't help laughing. <laughs> That night, Wilbert was in the sheds with Thomas and Toby. Percy had to stay at the steamworks to get all the sticky porridge off of him. You two are lucky to have a long line. Mine is only one and a half miles long, with a station at Northshot and another at Lydney. The scenery is super though, and my driver says it's better at the valley. Our volunteers are going to open that there too. They worked hard, but... It takes a long time. One of Wilbert's first jobs for tomorrow was at the lead mine. Don't pass the danger notice. I went past it and fell down a mine once. I've worked at a coal URI, so I know about danger notices. But there was once an engine who thought he knew better. Oh? What happened? This engine didn't have a name, just a number, 16 and he worked in the steelworks. One of the jobs that Sixteen and his friends had to do was to take the waste from the works in special cars to a place they called the Tip. When the wagons are brought to the Tip, they had to stop at a notice board, read DANGER, preventing them from going any further. Well, Sixteen got tired of always stopping at the same place. He tried to go further, but his driver always prevented him. The other engines tried to stop him too. If the notice says DANGER, you shouldn't pass it, they said. Sixteen paid no attention. Don't be stupid, you! We mustn't pass the notice, or goodness knows where we shall end up. But Sixteen wanted to know. Pooh! I can take care of myself. One wet day, Sixteen's chance came. The rails were slippery, and when his driver tried to stop, he couldn't. Sixteen had asked the cars which were in front of him to carry on past the warning sign. They did just that, and their momentum pulled Sixteen with them. Sixteen's driver fought for control. He put on the brakes, and Sixteen and the cars slowed to a standstill. You silly engine! Wasn't my fault. It was those cars. You always wanted to pass that board. I think you asked them to drag us on purpose. Oopsie. A foreman ran towards them. Oi! What are you doing there? It's not safe! The cars dragged us. Well, come to the office with me. And you, fireman, get your engine back on firm ground before it's too late. But it was already too late. As the foreman turned away, the earth beneath Sixteen's wheels sank and the rails sagged. A small rush of stones clattered away to the bottom of the bank. Sixteen's fireman knew that if he tried to move the engine now, he would only make things worse. Oh. Uh. Beneath Sixteen's weight, the rails sagged even more. 
Suddenly, they fell away completely. As the fireman jumped clear for safety, 16 overbalanced. The coupling between him and the cars broke, and he rolled cap over wheels down the bank. He reached the bottom with a crash and lay on his side, looking surprised and leaking steam in all directions. Help! <gasps> Thomas and Toby were silent. What happened to 16 after that? Oh, he was rescued, but he wasn't repaired. He was sent to the back of the shed in disgrace. Is he still there? Yes, he got better than he deserves. Some preservation people came and bought him, and now he lives in the Midlands. But I think he's lucky to be giving a second chance. Thomas and Toby could only agree. Thank <laughs> you.